All right, uh, so our goal here is to make this depth map uh, of an object that we have. Uh, we'll cover two ways of doing this. I think the, the better way is by using these nodes kind of laid out like this. Uh, we'll also talk about how we can use a mist and kind of um, abuse a mist to, to give us a depth map. Um, okay, so let's get started. Let's uh, revert back to, here we go. I'm gonna unlock the camera. So we've got our birthday cake. Uh, we've got some lights that shouldn't matter. Uh, we don't need them. Um, but I'll just leave that light there. This is the light. And we've got our camera, and we can see if I hit press zero on the numpad, it brings up uh, a nice view of the cake. And so if I render it, we see that we get a view of the cake, but that's not a depth map. Um, I, I will point out that if we go to our scene tab in our properties, um, our properties window, and we click on scene, and we check the passes on our uh, on our render layer. Our render layer right now has a Z pass, which is exactly what we're looking for, or pretty close to what we're looking for. It it, it contains information about how far away a given surface is. And so, our basically our goal is to just capture that information as an image or, or something that's like uh, more outputable to a file that we can use somewhere else, um, if that makes any sense. Uh, and let's just take a look at it before we set it up. Uh, we, When we render, we automatically switch our 3D view to this image editor view. Um, and it's, it's bringing up that render result that I just made. Um, I, don't know, I don't really change those very much, but we, the, what I want to bring your attention to is we're in a render layer. Right now we only have one layer, but we'll have a second one soon. And right now we're looking at the combined of like the um, specular, the shadows, emission, all these things over here are combined uh, and the diffuse to, to form this image. Um, then if we went to depth, it looks like it's just white, and that's because everywhere it's higher than one. Um, but you can see I can click, left click on this image and drag it around, and you can see that uh, it contains information down below, right down here, uh, about how far away it is to the object. Um, and I could actually even see it if I switched the view to a Z buffer view, uh, which might seem more useful. The problem is, I, uh, one, I can't take this and export as an image. If I export as an image, it'll look like this. Um, and so that's, it, it might seem like that's annoying, but it's, it's, uh, it's not so bad. And actually, you could save it as like an HDR image, and it, it, it would contain enough information for you to extract this stuff. Um, and so that's also an option. I'm, I'm not going to do it that way, though. So let's go back to this combined. Uh, the, the way that we can get other sort of images is through this uh, through what are called nodes and they basically let us do some uh, some filtering on the sorry that was my phone um, it allows us to do some filtering on the uh, whatever was rendered and remember we have this the Z buffer is getting rendered we just need to do some filtering on it to turn it into an image uh, so we'll open up our node editor and uh, even if you've used blender a bit you might not have gotten used to this node editor uh, I, it took me probably a year before I started using it but it's really really important um, so I just switched from materials node editing which I do a lot when I'm in the cycles render engine. I don't do it very much in the blender render. I usually, never mind. Uh, but uh, here, this is for making new compositions. Um, and, uh, and right now, it's not using nodes, but we can say we want to use nodes. And so you'll notice that as soon as I click on use nodes, we now have a new layer. Before it just said render layer here, but now we have this composite, which 
is described by this output um, I don't know what you call it this this output thing and here's our input and remember we want this is this is from the render layer this input and so we want to take the Z and then filter it in such a way and then turn that Z into an image and the way we can do that is by adding a I think it's under vector a uh, map range is a nice way of doing this so we can take Z put it into the value and then this value out to image and so um, this again is back to what we had before although it is a little bit different it's now taking those infinities or whatever and turning them into ones or those nine gazillions and turning them into ones what we want to do is go from remember uh, we saw that 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 cake was kind of like 15 away or something like 14 to maybe 20 or something like that and we can see that it's starting to look about right except it's backwards from how we typically have this we typically make it so uh, black is background so I'm gonna switch this 0 to 1 to here I can zoom in on those I realize I know what they say but uh, you might not know what they these things say here we go uh, we're going from the Z to the value and we're mapping from 2 and so I'm going to switch this from 0 to 1 from 0 to 1 to 1 to 0 there must be a better way of saying that uh, and you can see that we now have uh, black as far away white as close and now I'm just going to uh, press shift and uh, mess around with these until I you see if I bring it too close it's no good um, I want all the cake to be in front of the background and so I want like this to not be quite black and so good yeah it's not quite black you can see that and then up front I want it to be a little bit less than one and right now you see I'm getting some values that are bigger than one like right here and so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this back a little bit and yeah so now we don't have any values here greater than one on the cake and no values and everything's above zero on the cake so the cake everything on the cake is now between zero and one exactly as we want it and so we can now take this image and save it as and I'll say this cake depth map 2 and there we go um, I said I was going to use the mist as well so uh, you could stop right now because this is the, the I already showed the better way of doing it um, but for whatever reason if you're interested in how to do it with a mist uh, I see people recommend doing it that way sometimes I don't quite understand why um, with the mist we are not going to use these nodes and so uh, we could even say stop using nodes and so it just comes back to this what we're first going to need to do is make everything um, all of our objects we're going to have to give them material so let's let's give a new material we want it to be pure white and we want it to be shadeless and then um, I can say A, I can cl click A until I select all the things and uh, you know I could deselect this light if I want and deselect the camera too but I don't even have to do that um, and so now I can hit control L and link well actually I need to make sure I have this selected control L link the materials and so they all gain the material of you see how most of them are orange selected but one of them is like this yellowish selected they, they'll all take the the color of that yellow ish one so they're all um, shadeless white shadeless means they won't have like shadow on them and they won't they won't be uh, they won't have specular they won't be shiny at all either um, so if I just rendered it right now, it just looks like that. And so now we need to add in a mist. 
I think that's in uh, s world, the world tab. If we add in a mist, we want to make sure our mist is linear. And uh, remember our values from before, the start value was kind of like 14, and then the depth was something like 10. And we can check if that's good by clicking on the camera, going over here and saying you want to display the mist. And so that looks something that looks kind of close to right. So let's go back over to our world and bring our mist a little bit less depth. Right. And so now if I hit F12, we get something kind of right, except it's not black. It's just going to this gray. So we have to change the sky. Um, and so that's also in the world we need to change the sky to be black and then we get a depth map that way as well it's a little bit strange and it it's not I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it I I would definitely recommend using these nodes um, all right thanks have a good one